In this latest video in our series of Forex of Basics, we're going to be exploring central banks and the Forex markets. We're going to recap how interest rates affect Forex prices, and then we're going to be looking at monetary policy, how central banks use interest rates to control inflation. And then we're going to take a look at each of the individual central banks for the major currencies. Hello, I'm Peter Martin with Trading212, and we add educational videos about the financial markets and about trading to YouTube regularly. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel then, because that's the easiest way to learn whenever we've added fresh content to YouTube. Well, in the previous video, we took a look at a number of different factors that can affect Forex prices. One of those was interest rates. So let's quickly recap, quite simply, how interest rates can affect forex prices. We looked last time at dollar yen, saying that interest rates in the US are significantly higher than interest rates in Japan. And that interest rate differential can provide an incentive for yield seeking investors to buy US dollars and to fund the purchase of those dollars by selling yen. And incidentally, this is what is known in the forex market as a carry trade. And we said that generally speaking, if interest rates go up, that would tend to provide a boost for a currency. So if it was US interest rates that went higher, that would boost the US dollar. If it was Japanese interest rates that went higher, that would tend to boost the Japanese yen. Similarly, generally speaking, if interest rates go lower, that tends to drag on a currency. So once again, if it was lower rates in the US, that would be dragging on the dollar. If it was lower rates in Japan, then that change in rates would be a drag on the yen. And of course, it's central banks that have a large influence over interest rates. So central banks hold sway to a large degree over the strength of the currencies that they're in charge of. So what we're going to focus on in this video are the central banks for the major currencies. So let's just quickly go back over what we mean by the major currencies. So a quick reminder then of the seven major currencies, the US dollar, the USD, the British pound, GBP, the Euro, EUR, the Japanese yen, JPY, the Swiss franc, CHF, the Canadian dollar, CAD, and the Australian dollar, AUD. Now, there are quite a few commonalities between how the central banks for the major currencies approach monetary policy. So let's now take a generalized look at some of these aspects of how they set monetary policy. So for the major currencies, we've said before that what they have in common is that they are currencies for large developed economies. And so the central banks for these currencies do tend to have similar aims and ways of implementing monetary policy. So generally speaking, they tend to have price stability as a key aim. And they will also often keep an eye on what I've called here the economic well-being of the country. Now, some of the uh, central banks will focus more on price stability or entirely on price stability, and some others will look at economic well-being in terms of things like fostering maximum employment. And when we say price stability, basically what that means is trying to keep inflation at a steady rate that isn't too high and isn't too low. So central banks and inflation are two things that are of real interest to forex traders. Central banks will tend to have an inflation target and for a lot of the central banks we're going to look at in this video this is around about two percent generally uh, that we'll see how there may be some small variations when we get onto looking at individual central banks. Because price stability is a key aim of the central banks, a central bank will monitor inflation in its country or region. And if that inflation rate becomes too high, i.e. if it rises above target, then the central bank may feel that it's necessary to raise its policy rate. So here we have our central bank and the central bank is keeping an eye on what's going on with prices. Now, if they go too high, i.e. if inflation persists above target, then the central bank may respond by raising its policy rate. This is going to have an effect 
on lenders. They will be encouraged to raise their interest rates and that will have an effect on borrowers who are going to feel a bit of a squeeze. So the borrowers will be less inclined to both borrow and spend. So the action of the central bank here raising its policy rate has discouraged borrowing and discouraged spending and thereby eases price pressures. So if you're trading a certain currency, one thing you really need to be aware of is when the central bank is going to be making an announcement regarding monetary policy. So let's run through now each of these central banks for the major currencies, starting with the US. So USA to start. So we've said more than once before in this series of videos that the US dollar is the most traded currency in the world. All the major currency pairs involve the dollar. And if you're trading the US dollar as part of a currency pair, you need to be aware of what is going on with the Federal Reserve, which is the central bank for the US. You need to know when they're holding an FOMC meeting because that means they're going to make a rate announcement. Now the FOMC is the Federal Open Markets Committee and they meet eight times a year to decide on US monetary policy. Now the Fed has a dual mandate, one part of which is to promote maximum employment and the second part is to maintain stable prices to which end they have an inflation target currently of 2%. And the measure of inflation that the Fed tends to look towards is what's called the PCE price index, the Personal Consumer Expenditure Price Index. Now, the FOMC meetings uh, are two day meetings. They usually begin on a Tuesday and end on a Wednesday. And uh, they're usually held in January, March, May, June, July, September, late October or early November and December. And uh, the announcement is usually made on the Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And that's usually 7 p.m. UK time. And four times a year, they make these quarterly projections in the March, June, September and December meetings. And a key person is Jerome Powell, who is the current Fed chairman. You might want to keep an ear to the ground for any public statements he makes because he's the most important voice in the FOMC. And for the UK, if you're trading an FX pair involving the pound, you'll want to pay attention to the Bank of England, the UK's central bank, and when the Bank of England is holding its monetary policy committee meetings. Like the Fed, they hold their policy meetings eight times a year. The MPC meetings are roughly every six weeks, and they're on a Thursday, and the announcement is made at midday UK time. Monetary policy is set by the Bank of England in order to pursue a 2% inflation target. That isn't set by the Bank of England, that target is set by the UK government. And a key person at the Bank of England is the Governor Mark Carney, the former head honcho of the Bank of Canada. And now for the euro area. The euro is second only to the US dollar in terms of trading volumes. And if you're trading the euro as part of a forex pair, you will want to pay attention to what's going on with monetary policy decided by the ECB, the European Central Bank. And the Governing Council of the ECB holds monetary policy meetings uh, on a similar schedule to the Bank of England. That's roughly every six weeks, eight times a year. They hold them on a Thursday. The primary objective of the ECB's monetary policy is to maintain price stability. They aim for inflation that is below but close to 2% over the medium term. And their inflation measure is the HICP, the Harmonized Index of Consumer Prices. In other words, an index of consumer prices that has been adjusted or harmonized across all the EU member states. They publish their policy decisions at 1.45 p.m. Central Eastern Time, followed by a press conference uh, 45 minutes later with ECB President Mario Draghi, where he explains the policy decision and takes questions from journalists. For Japan and the yen, the central bank is the Bank of Japan, and the policy board of the Bank of Japan meets eight times per year. Now, the bank introduced a price stability target of 2% in year-over-year -year change in the Japanese CPI back in 2013. But in 2016, 
it introduced what it calls an inflation overshooting commitment, where it continues to expand the monetary base until CPI, excluding fresh food, exceeds 2% and stays above the target in a stable manner. The governor of the Bank of Japan is Haruhiko Kuroda. And for Switzerland and the Swiss franc, the central bank is the Swiss National Bank, and their governing board meets only quarterly to decide on monetary policy. Their target is for Swiss CPI of less than 2%, and key person at the Swiss National Bank is the chairman of the governing board, which is Thomas Jordan. And the final two we're going to look at for Canada and the Canadian dollar, the central bank is the Bank of Canada, and the bank's governing council makes interest rate announcements eight times per year, usually on a Wednesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it sets its policy rate to try and achieve an inflation target of 2%. So that's the midpoint of a 1% to 3% target range. That target is jointly set by the Bank of Canada and the Canadian federal government, and it's reviewed every five years. And the governor of the Bank of Canada is Stephen Pelos. And then for Australia and the Aussie dollar, the central bank is the RBA, the Reserve Bank of Australia. The Reserve Bank board announces interest rate decisions 11 times per year. That's the first Tuesday of every month, with the exception of January, and the announcement is made at 2.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. The RBA has an inflation target of 2 to 3% on average over the medium term in CPI. And the governor of the RBA is Philip Lowe. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video exploring central banks and the forex market. If you did, please just take a moment to tap on the thumbs up button and give us a like. Or why not share your thoughts with us in the comments section, what do you think about monetary policy? What do you think about central banks and their effect on the forex market? Drop us a line in the comments section. We do read each one. But that's all for now from me, Peter Martin and Trading212. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.